Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm doing the update from switching everything Apple over to everything Android. Last time I did a video, I committed to doing a full seven days to really fully integrate my life and everything Android. Well, I'll tell you that I lasted a whole 24 hours. Yeah, it did not last the week like I wanted to. Let me tell you why. So first off, pros of the Samsung Note 20 Ultra over the iPhone 11 Pro Max. Uh, the first thing is the dimensions. The dimensions of this device are just, in my opinion, much better than the iPhone 11 Pro Max. Being skinnier and taller, it's just easier to do one hand functions. Another pro is gonna be the screen resolution or the display. The brightness on this thing is just outstanding when compared to the iPhone, it's much brighter. Easier to see when you're outside in the sun, and it's also just uh, a better experience on the eyes when you're looking at anything data-related, when you're watching movies, playing games. Uh, just overall, I found myself preferring this device over my iPhone when it came to that kind of stuff. A huge advantage, a huge pro for this guy is the in-screen fingerprint sensor. I really wish Apple had that. It's so much faster and just makes more sense for how I use my phone than always having to look at it and swipe up with Face ID, so in-screen fingerprint scanners, uh, definitely a pro in my book. A camera, we went out to Galveston um, and took a bunch of photos, which I'll show you the comparison here. Um, but this guy has 50 times zoom, which is just much better in terms of being able to zoom in and get some really good shots. Uh, compared to the iPhone that has 10 times zoom. Uh, so the camera I would say is a little bit better on this device than the iPhone 11 Pro Max. Uh, but the flip side is in doing video, I felt like the video was good, but I looked a little washed out in almost all the videos I took. I did a lot of similar side-by-side uh, -side videos of this, using this and then using the iPhone 11 Pro. And I'll show you an example of what I'm talking about. But... What's up guys, just got to Galveston right in front of the uh, Galvez, as you can see behind me. Pretty dope. Also got a little beach action going on here. Pretty sweet. Pan around. Boom. Oh, hello. All right, guys, this is on this Android device. Same idea, Galvez behind me. You got the beach right here. Pan around using the Android phone. The Galvez. Well, hello again. Personally, I think the videos look much better using an iPhone. Uh, pictures are definitely better on this device. And the last thing is battery life. Battery life is a little bit better on this guy than it is on the iPhone. Uh, and that's about it for pros. Looking at cons, uh, the first con is an obvious one, the software. I'm not an Android guy whatsoever. It's cool that you can customize it and you can make it your own. Cool, I guess. Overall, not digging it. You know, I like iOS, I like the ease of it. I like that everything just works out of the box. You don't have to customize it to go out and download and find different launchers or different whatever. Uh, again, it's cool if you like to do those kind of things. Android's definitely a good way to go because you can completely make the device your own in terms of style and look and feel and all that. But for me, I just don't care. So I'll definitely say software is the first con in my book because it's not an iOS. Uh, the next one will be notifications. I found myself struggling to figure out how to get rid of a notification. As you can see, all these notification icons on here. Um, on an iPhone, when you see those notifications, you click on it, you open it. When you review whatever the uh, notification is, they go away. What I found on the Android is some things go away, others just remain there, and you have to go in and manually clear them out. Don't understand why, I don't really know how to change that, but. An example is phone calls and texts, um, and even emails. When I go in and I look at them, notif notifications go away. But for like Facebook, my alarm, ESPN, certain applications, 
constantly show updates even, or notifications even though I go in and look at them. So you have to pull down the screen and click clear here at the bottom to clear out all the notifications. Just doesn't really make much sense why I'd have to go in and clear them out if I already went in and looked at them. So a big con in my book is the notifications uh, not disappearing once you look at whatever the notification is. Another big con is sending video from Android to an iPhone. I kind of went on a rant in my last video, um, giving you a heads up that I already knew this was going to be an issue. But man, I took a very short video, I think maybe 10 seconds, and I texted it to an iPhone device, and the quality was just complete trash. Um, terrible. And then I went in to try to email it, and it said the file was too large. A 10 second video was too large because the quality was too great, apparently. So the only way I've found to really be able to transfer files successfully without really losing the resolution of the video um, is by downloading a third-party app like Dropbox or using uh, snapdrop.net. Uh, just go to that website, snapdrop.net, on both devices, and they'll both find each other, and you can send files that way. It's pretty easy. You don't have to download anything. But still, it's an extra step to be able to, to do something that's completely fluid and seamless when using an iPhone to iPhone or even Android to Android. Uh, but again, most, almost everybody I communicate with has an iPhone device. So for me, it was a complete headache uh, trying to send videos. Again, this is just a 24 hour period. And that's really it in terms of the cons. Um, Overall, I would say that this phone is an outstanding device. Honestly, I prefer this device if it wasn't for iMessage. There's other things I can kind of get over, I can get by with. If this had a way to do iMessage, hands down, I would choose this over the iPhone. Um, it's just those headaches of being able to send information back and forth between the two uh, different softwares. I can't do it. The other cons I said, I can, I can get over it. You know, the video, I'm a little washed out, but whatever, not a big deal. But just the, the dimensions of this phone, the way that it's curved on the sides, it feels smaller than it really is when you hold it in the hand. It's just easier to do one-hand navigation. The resolution is gorgeous. I can't say enough great things about this phone. It's just not an iPhone. So for me, can't do it. Now let's transition to the watch. Uh, as I mentioned in my previous video, my Apple Watch is hands down my favorite accessory. I, I use it more than I use anything else in my life, to be honest with you. Uh, and mainly it's for two things, for fitness and for tracking my macros. Well, I will tell you that both of those things on this guy work terribly. In my experience, and I'll show you a video that compares, I wore both of these devices and I did the same workout. I did a cycle class, like an indoor cycle class, and then I did a weight training um, on my own. I just lifted weights, and I can tell you that the, the differences were drastic, not even close. Okay, so day one, it's Monday morning at 7 a.m. First day, and I already miss Apple. I'm wearing this Android watch. Um, to be honest, it just doesn't feel the same. It feels too bulky, too heavy. It just feels weird, but I'm gonna go in, get a workout in, see how the workout function on Android works uh, compared to Apple. But so far, like I said, it's the first day, it's the morning of the first day, and I already miss Apple. So it's gonna be a long week. All right, so just finished my first workout using Android, uh, the Android watch. And my first complaint is the accuracy. So Monday is always leg day for me. When using my Apple watch, I burn anywhere from 700 to uh, 900 calories doing this particular workout. 700 to 900 normally. Today, exact same workout, same weight, actually went heavier in a couple things. And the Android watch told me I burned 289 calories. In about an hour and 10 minutes of a workout. 
There's no way that's accurate. So first test, I would say Apple Watch is much better than Android uh, when tracking fitness. The heart rate was pretty spot on in terms of accurate tracking, but when it came to the workout itself and the caloric burn, it was night and day. It was terrible. To give you an example, I did a cycle class. I wore both devices. This device, it's cool if you want just a watch. If, you, if all you care about is having a watch, being able to tell the time, being able to see the weather, and have a couple notifications you just get at a quick glance, it works okay. But having the full integration of being able to go into each application on the watch face, it's just not at the same level that the Apple Watch is at. For me, I absolutely love my macros, being right on my home screen, being able to touch it, boom, right away, see where I'm at. And the great thing about this is just at a glance, based on how I'm feeling throughout the day, uh, if I get any cravings, I can just look here and kind of see, does that make sense? Can I have it? Or what should I focus on? If I need more protein, if I need more carbs, if I need more fats. So for me, it's just super simplistic and it ke helps keep me on track daily. Uh, whereas I didn't have this just for one day. And I can tell you, I didn't feel the same because I was I felt lost not knowing where I was at from a macronutrient standpoint and having to always go into my device, unlock it, go into the application, wait for it to load, and then go into my macros and see where I'm at. All that, or I can just raise my wrist and see exactly where I'm at. So for me, the watch was a big deal breaker because of the fitness tracking, how it was inaccurate, and how there's no way to get my macros on the main screen. So my overall consensus is if you just are looking at the phone, the Android, the Samsung Note 20 Ultra, it's a fantastic phone. I definitely recommend it. For a $1,300 price tag, I probably wouldn't recommend it. It's a fantastic phone, but it's a lofty price to pay for that. We can get an iPhone, a brand new iPhone for $1,100 with the same uh, memory. I would absolutely say save 200 bucks and get a better device. It's the Samsung Note 20 Ultra is a great device. If you're an Android person, I highly recommend it. If you're on the fence between Android and iPhone, I would say go with the iPhone because you'll save at least 200 bucks because the uh, 128 gig brand new iPhone uh, 12 Pro Max that launches November 13th starts at $1,100, whereas the Samsung Note 20 Ultra is still $1,300. It just doesn't make enough sense to justify the additional $200 for a couple of things that might do a little bit better, whereas overall your experience, at least my experience on the iPhone, is hands down better. Anyway, hope this helped, guys. I just want to give you my quick breakdown. It didn't last a week. Kind of funny. I only lasted 24 hours. Uh, but I just couldn't do it. I'm too attached to my iPhone and my Apple Watch. Just the functionality, the, the ease of use and how it, it makes everything that I do on a daily basis easier. Couldn't commit to a full week without it. Hope this helps. As always, please like, subscribe, and share. And until next time, take care and peace out.